2022 was filled with loads of great ultra-violent matches with many notable performances, but after 12 months, who stacked up to be the best deathmatch wrestler of the year? I'm going to be breaking down the top 15 deathmatch wrestlers of 2022 based off of performance, notable victories, tournament success rate, along with other achievements and different accomplishments. I am aware there are some wrestlers on this list that may be more controversial than others, but none of that is factored in here. This is only from the criteria I just listed. One last little disclaimer, these rankings will not include any deathmatch wrestling in Japan simply because I'm just not versed enough in their scene, but I will factor in American companies who held events inside of Japan. So with all that said, I think it's time we get to the top 15. Number 15, Sawyer Wreck. Sawyer Wreck comes in at number 15 with the least amount of wrestling experience, with only about three years under her belt, but boy did she make a huge splash on the deathmatch scene in 2022. She ended the year with over 50 matches, claiming 28 victories, and hey, I think anyone who has more wins than losses says a lot in only their third year in the business. With those 28 wins, she bested wrestlers like Madman Pondo, Joey Janela, Jimmy Lloyd. But in my opinion, I think her biggest win of the year had to be against Matt Tremont in his last ever no rope barbed wire match. If you didn't get to see that match, it's at H2O's Torn to Shreds event. Everybody's been raving about it online. You need to go out of your way to find it and watch it. 2022 did start off a little slow for Sawyer, but by the end, she had John Wayne Murdoch saying this. You gotta give it up for fucking Sawyer Rat, goddammit. I wouldn't want to end the end year with anybody else but fucking you. Thank you. While Sawyer didn't win any titles this year, I'd be very surprised if she did not go home with a couple belts next year. And you know what? I think that goes for deathmatch tournaments as well because she didn't win any this year, but she did compete in two. The first one was the AAPW infamous Texas deathmatch tournament where she did make it to the semifinals, by the way. She then took part in one of the biggest tournaments of the year, GCW's Nick Gage Invitational, where she lost to Alex Colon in the first round. Riding this huge wave of momentum to close out 2022, I think Sawyer Wreck is going to absolutely destroy 2023 and really move up in these rankings. I saw this year as more of an official arrival and debut as one of the top women wrestlers when it comes to death matches. Number 14, that would be Drew Parker. Uh-oh, this is where I know I'm going to catch some flack because, yes, Drew Parker did put in damn fine work for GCW this year, including winning this year's Tournament of Survival. Other than that, though, I mean, there just wasn't enough body of work outside of Japan to land him higher on this list. Drew wrestled almost exclusively in GCW in the United States this year, minus one appearance for VXS, but... I do want to point out that he did wrestle for GCW in Japan, and I am going to factor those matches into this ranking. Still, though, it only resulted in 15 matches to work with. I think it says a lot to get this high in the rankings based off of that because he only lost three of those matches, and all of which were multi-man matches. Parker's Tournament of Survival win is what's really cementing him into the placement on this list because a lot of fans are going around saying this tournament was one of the best deathmatch tournaments they've seen of all time. He defeated Cole Raddick in round one, Rina Yamashita in round two, and took down one of the all-time deathmatch greats, Matt Tremont, in the finals. He had other memorable matches this year, one of which was with Los Macisos, but it's his Tournament of Survival 7 win that he'll be remembered for this year inside the United States. The graphic you've seen was not wrong. Drew Parker did hold a couple titles this year, but they were from Japanese companies, so unfortunately I didn't factor those reigns in this rankings here. And trust me, I know how good the Deathmatch Prince is. He was very hard to place in this year's rankings. But in the end, he only made it into the double digits. I'm sorry. Oh, and I'm very sure if you include his BJW work, his Freedoms matches, he's probably going to be at the very top of this list. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And like I said earlier, to me, it says a lot about Parker still making the top 15 when he only wrestled outside of Japan for three months. And his name carries a lot of weight in the deathmatch scene, so I can only imagine how high he would rank if he wrestled here for the entire year. But you know what? That's me being greedy. Number 13, Mickey Knuckles. The godmother of hardcore has almost two decades to her name as a professional wrestler, and she's still going strong. 
Vicky's matches are consistently entertaining and memorable. And if you don't believe me, go watch her four-way match with Cruel, Schlack, and Sadika. It ended up winning IWTV's Match of the Year. She had several other good matches too, going on to pick up wins over Otis Koger, Dale Patricks, Madman Pondo, and even Matt Tremont. And we're definitely going to include that AWR revolutionary title win over Akira back in July. To me, where Mickey really stood out were in the deathmatch tournament she competed in. Dear Lord, going back and looking at last year, Mickey took part in nine different tournaments. In 2022, she dialed it back to only five, and that gave her almost as much as anybody else on this list. So look at how she did. First off, she lost to Hoodfoot in the first round of the Horror Slam Murder City Deathmatch Cup. Then the very next week, she made it to the finals of H2O's Ultra Violent Kingdom 6, where she lost to Jimmy Lyon. Later in the summer, she lost to Eric Dillinger in the first round of ICW's Insane 8 tournament. And in October, she fell to Bobby Beverly, literally, in the finals of CZW's Return to Ultra Violence with Tournament of Death 19, where she was knocked unconscious. It was a very, very scary ending. And luckily, TOD did not take her out the rest of the year because she would go on to have a brutal match with Casey Kirk for the ICW American Deathmatch title the next month that people are still talking about. Another very solid year in the books for Mickey Knuckles, and here's to many more. Number 12, Eric Dillinger. Eric Dillinger is probably one of the lesser known names in these rankings. And according to my research, he has around 100 matches to his career with over 30 of them coming here in 2022. The dude knows how to win gold. Dillinger is going to end 2022 the world champion for both Insane Championship Wrestling and Asylum Wrestling Revolution. And that's not all. He would go on to win the ICW Alternative title as well as the NEW High Stakes Championship. In 2022, Eric Dillinger completely dominated the whole Midwest deathmatch scene, picking up wins over Dale Patrick's. Neil Diamond Cutter, Josh Crane, Orange Fight, and even Drake Younger in one of his best title defenses of the year. Besides his world title reigns, Dillinger's biggest moment of the year was his insane eight tournament win. In round one, he defeated Mickey Knuckles in a damn good match, followed by a victory in round two against Akira. And then in the finals, Dillinger pinned former two-time insane eight winner Orn Veit to win the title in the entire tournament. There's no doubt about it. The accomplishments are there. And just because Dillinger isn't working in one of the top deathmatch companies yet, it doesn't mean that he hasn't put together a great year of work. In fact, he just made his GCW debut in November, teaming up with Dysfunction, challenging for the tag team titles. And then in January of 2023, he makes his ICW No Holds Barred debut. Personally, I expect to see him make an even bigger impact in the deathmatch scene in 2023. As for 2022, though, he earns this spot through and through. Number 11, Matt Tremont. Let's face the facts, people. Matt Tremont worked his ass off this year, especially for a man who was supposed to be retired. Yet this dude is out here working almost 70 matches a year. So looking back, Tremont did have success early on in the year, teaming up with Nick Gage as the hate club to win the GCW tag team titles. Now the run wasn't long, but it saw some brutal and memorable matches. Tremont hit a dry spell throughout the year, and just when it didn't look like he was going to win any other titles, two days before the new year, Matt won the IW WTV World Championship in a gauntlet match. Matt Tremont is known as one of the most decorated deathmatch tournament competitors of all time, and though he didn't win any more of those tournaments this year, he didn't disappoint either. At GCW's Tournament of Survival, Tremont would beat Slade in the opening round and would then go on to defeat Toto Segura in the semifinals. In the final round, though, Tremont would fall short by eating a pin from Drew Parker, putting an end to the highly talked about tournament. Just two months later in August, Tremont would enter ICW No Holds Barred Battle of the Tough Guys 2 tournament. Tremont got an opening victory over Chris Bradley, but would then go on to lose to Hoodfoot in round number two, who would go on to win the entire tournament, by the way. So he had good matches this year. He had good tournament performances. He had multiple titles this year, but when looking at the stats, his lack of victories is really what is keeping Tremont from moving higher up on this list. And I'm not an idiot. I know Tremont is at that stage in his career where he's building up his company H2O and putting over people in a really big way. He will go down as one of the all-time greats, but this year was more of a year of giving from Tremont. And that's going to land him just outside of the top 10 in 2022. 
Number 10, Joel Bateman. Before 2022, I bet none of you have even heard of Joel Bateman. That is because he has been tearing up the deathmatch scene exclusively in Australia. After getting noticed for his work down under, and you know that is the company deathmatch down under, not some stupid pun, ICW No Holds Barred brought him into the United States. In his first match here, he defeated Reed Bentley to become the new ICW American Deathmatch Champion. Yes, it was short-lived because after only one successful title defense, he did lose the title to Eric Ryan just a day later. But Bateman wasn't done with the title though because four months later, he would beat Eric Ryan becoming the first ever and only two-time champion as of this recording. And speaking of titles, Bateman will go on to hold the Deathmatch Down Under Deathmatch title, and that's done all. He held New Zealand's top Deathmatch title, Heathen's Combat One Above All Championship, for four months. When it comes to his Deathmatch tournament participation this year, Bateman won the 2022 Dream Tournament, which is Deathmatch Down Under's annual Deathmatch tournament. Good God, can I say Deathmatch anymore? He also made it to the semifinals of Horror Slam's Murder City Deathmatch Cup, where he lost to Jimmy Lloyd. Bateman exploded onto the scene in the United States this year, and when you look at his victories over names like Akira, Reed Bentley, Neil Diamond Cutter, Eric Ryan, Colby Carino, John Wayne Murdoch, you can see why. I know I'm going to sound greedy again, but hey, America needs more Joel Bateman. Number nine, Masada. What a comeback year 2022 has been for Masada. Now over 20 years in the business, he ends the year the XPW World Champion and even made an AEW appearance to boot. With most of his success coming from XPW and Circle 6, Masada won an overwhelming majority of his matches this year. Some of his highlight victories were over Atticus Coger, Hoodfoot, Jimmy Lloyd, Brian Cage, Drake Younger, Bobby Beverly, Eric Ryan, Gangrel, and even, yeah, even... Vampiro. Uh, it's been a wild year, let's just say that. XPW brought back its King of the Deathmatch tournament for the first time since 2002, and Masada almost won that. He took out Lucky 13 in the first round, defeated Pagano in the second round, and then bested Big F and Joe in the semifinals. But it was Schlack who finally took him out in the final round of the tournament after a pretty wild brawl. And if you had Masada career resurgence on your 2022 bingo card, good for you because I know I didn't expect it. Number eight, Rina Yamashita. Rina Yamashita kind of falls in the same category as Drew Parker, where she had very few matches to be ranked with the majority of her work being in Japan. The one big difference between her and Drew this year is she would shock Game Changer Wrestling when she defeated Alex Colon for the first night of Homecoming Weekend to capture the GCW Ultra Violent Championship. She would then come back the very next night and put on a great match defending her title against Sawyer Wreck. The wins and title offenses continued the rest of the year, and Rena ended 2022 the current GCW Ultra Violent Champion, perhaps, perhaps the top deathmatch championship in the United States. I think her tournament of Survival 7 outing was very well received. She beat Hoodfoot in an impressive first round match. But then she did take the loss to Drew Park in the semifinals. But even with that loss, the fans still showed a ton of love for both good matches on the night. What a run Rena had in 2022 for GCW. In my opinion, she is one of the top wrestlers right now in that company after only six months of matches. That, that says a whole lot. I mean, just listen to some of these names. You got Alex Cologne, Vance Warner, Hoodfoot. Cole Raderick, John Wayne Murdoch, Cyclope, Sawyer Wreck, Drew Parker, and Matt Tremont. They all fell victim to the Deathmatch Amazon S this year. If that isn't a who's who of top Deathmatch talent, I don't know what is. Number seven, Bobby Beverly. I've referred to the Bev as Mr. Runner-Up for quite a while now. It doesn't matter what tournament he seems to be in, he always manages to get to the finals just to lose. And wouldn't you know it, this year he finally broke that curse. CZW's Tournament of Death returned in 2022, and Bobby Beverly defeated Otis Koger in the opening round. He followed that up with a second round win over Big F and Joe, and then finally took home the trophy after beating Mickey Knuckles in the finals. But just two months before that, though, the Bev entered ICW No Holds Bards Battle of the Tough Guys 2, where guess what? He made it to the finals only to lose to Hoodfoot. <laughs> Hey, I don't mean to laugh. I'm just saying he's cursed, okay? He did have three good matches in that tournament, though. He beat Casanova Valentine, he beat Slade, and he did beat Akira. 
So with two pretty good performances, I say when it came to tournaments, 4 for O's Bobby Beverly delivered in a pretty big way. When it came to championships, Bobby Beverly won the Paradigm Pro Wrestling Brass Knuckle Championship twice, trading the belt back and forth with Ron Mathis, which did include a 60-minute Iron Man death match. That's, that's just hard to comprehend. He did challenge for several other titles throughout the year, like the ICW American Deathmatch title, Horror Slam's Heavyweight Championship, RPW's Deathmatch title, and H2O's Danny Havoc Hardcore title. But... He came up short each and every time. I think winning maybe one or two of those would have put Bobby Beverly inside the top five of these rankings, but hey, uh, we'll never know. He did walk away with major wins this year, mainly for ICW No Holds Barred and Circle Six, but I say finally winning that major tournament is what really helped get him this high up on the list. Number six goes to Eric Ryan. Ever since becoming the king of the death matches back in 2020, Eric Ryan has remained one of the top death match wrestlers in the entire United States. This year, he did tone down the amount of tournaments he competed in after entering in nine last year, which is just unimaginable. Actually, the only tournament he did enter this year was XPW's King of the Death Match, which I feel like he has to with that name. But oddly enough, he lost to Schlack in the second round. So when you look at the tournament breakdown from last year to this year, you do see a big drop down. But then again, I mean, there were less death match tournaments this year compared to last year overall. So, I mean, hey, it is what it is. Where Eric did leave his mark this year was his awesome ICW American Deathmatch Championship title reign. He beat Joel Bateman back in March for the title, and for the next five months, he would defend it against top-tier talent like Dale Patricks, Matt Tremont, Masada, John Wayne Murdoch, Tommy Vendetta, and even his 440 buddy and tag team partner, Bobby Beverly. The one thing that did stand out to me for Eric this year was he really didn't have a slow point. He consistently won matches and never fell into a rut. Eric Ryan is still seen as one of the best hybrid deathmatch wrestlers in all of the independents right now, and his year was filled with memorable matches, no doubt about that. But I will admit his lack of other accomplishments hurt him just a little bit in these rankings. Number five, Hoodfoot. Kicking off the top five, we have Hoodfoot, and man, what a monster year for Hoodfoot. He competed in the most deathmatch tournaments this year over anybody else in the rankings. So let's try to break those down really quick here. He made it to the finals of Horror Slam's Murder City Deathmatch Cup, only to lose to Jimmy Lloyd. The Necro Butcher did end up eliminating him in round number one of XPW's King of the Deathmatch Tournament. He also lost in the first round of GCW's Tournament of Survival 7 to Rina Yamashita. And wow, what, a, what an ending to that match. But his tournament luck did finally come around at ICW No Holds Barred Battle of the Tough Guys 2, where he ran through Hardway Heater in the first round, Matt Tremont in the second round, Brandon Kirk in the semifinals, and then he beat Bobby Beverly in one hell of a tournament final. After surveying the year as a whole, not many people outworked Hoodfoot. He worked in over 80 matches total and scored wins over the absolute best deathmatch wrestlers in the United States. Seriously, just listen to these names. John Wayne Murdoch, Mickey James. Wait, no, that's Mickey Knuckles. Sorry, my notes are wrong there. Uh, Mickey Knuckles, Madman Pondo, Akira, Sadika, Eric Ryan, Brandon Kirk, Tank, Matt Tremont, Sawyer Wreck, One Called Manders, Josh Crane, Jimmy Lloyd, Casanova, Valentine, Bobby Beverly, Eric Dillinger, and you see what I'm saying here, right? Oh, and while I don't know a whole lot about the Japanese deathmatch scene, I do know who Abdullah Kobayashi is, and Hoodfoot scored a huge win over him this year as well, one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm just going to be honest, the lack of titles Hoodfoot took home this year is damn near criminal. I hope people out there are still not sleeping on him because you need to wake up because he's already proven he can go with the best. The only really thing missing this year is more gold to his name. And my prediction for next year, Hoodfoot takes home at least two major deathmatch titles. It's It's got to happen. We're going to see where it goes. Number four is Casey Kirk. Usually in the deathmatch realm, you don't normally see well put together and engaging stories, but in my opinion, 2022 saw one of the better storylines in all of the independents, not just deathmatch wrestling. And that story revolved around Casey Kirk and her husband, Brandon Kirk. Here's the quick cliff notes for you. Casey beat Joel Bateman back in September to become the first ever female ICW American Deathmatch champion. Over the rest of the year, the title would become the most important thing to her, more than even her own husband, Brandon. After even switching back to her maiden name, Brandon reached his breaking point 
and went and said this. And the only way to save us is for me to take that from you. Oh. You're damn oh. fucking right. So the story reached its climax at ICW No Holds Barred Volume 39 show, where it was husband versus wife for the title. Casey would finally lose the title there, but wow, what a year she put together. All during this feud and all during this time, she was dishing out some top-tier deathmatch wrestling. She even got this praise right here after defending her title against Mickey Knuckles. I am very proud of you. Here, but watching you walk is worth every fucking bit of it. And guess what? In her only death match tournament this year, Casey Kirk won the entire thing. We're talking pro wrestling after darks, violence for the sake of tournament here. She would beat Sawyer Wreck in round number one, Randy West in round two, and then would defeat Casanova Valentine in the finals. So taking a quick look back at Casey's year, she was one for one in tournaments. She had an epic ICW American Deathmatch title run, victories over almost every top deathmatch wrestler in the United States. But for me, the most memorable part of the whole thing was the story that her and her husband had in ICW No Hold. Part. And if you ask me, that is truly a year to remember. And number three, God. Oh, actually, oh, my bad. Little correction here. Uh, no God, only Schlack. Holy hell. Talk about a wrecking ball of a man. Schlack ended 2022 with what I say was easily his best year as a deathmatch wrestler. Looking back at this list, most of the wrestlers in these rankings, you can see really excelled in maybe one, two companies. Well, this year, Schlack tore it up for XPW, GCW, H2O, Circle Six, and ICW No Holds Barred. His only title did come from XPW, though. He ended up winning it back in April and held it through the entire year. He won it after winning XPW's 2022 King of the Deathmatch Tournament, where he beat Dirty Ron in the first round, then made quick work of both Eric Ryan and Sage Sin Supreme in rounds two and three. The finals saw an all-out war between Schlack and Masada, where a little fire was needed to put an end to the match. To me, nowadays, few wrestlers give off that legitimate vibe, and Schlack does just that, I think. He looks absolutely indestructible, and all throughout 2022, I think he showed just how crazy he can actually be. He will never be known as the best wrestler on the card that night, but you can bet when his match starts, you are going to see a fight, and it's going to be a bloody one. Out of all of the destruction that Schlack took part in throughout the year, his four-way match with cruel Mickey Knuckles and Sadiqa ended up taking home match of the year for IWA TV's end of year awards. If you didn't see that match, it was at ICW No Holds Barred Ultraviolet Vortex. For years, Schlack has been moving up the deathmatch rankings in my opinion, but for 2022, I think he finally reached that top tier status. Number two, Alex Colon. Wow, what an incredibly hard decision this was to make. I am not even kidding. To me, number one and two, I flip-flopped them multiple times even before releasing this video. The Blood Fighter, Alex Colon, was my deathmatch wrestler of 2021, by the way. I did all of this same research, but I just didn't do the video. It was a lot of work. I wasted a lot of my time. But Alex Colon would have been number one last year had I done this video. Now the very next year, I have him dropping down to number two, but still, it, that doesn't take away from an amazing year. I will say one of the downgrades to the Colon's year compared to last year was the tournament category. He swept GCW's two biggest deathmatch tournaments in 2021, but only competed in the Nick Gage Invitational this year. He put on a great showing either way, making it to the finals where he lost to his biggest rival and also ally this year, John Wayne Murdoch. And I don't want to gloss over this tournament run either because he did beat Sawyer Wreck and Hunter Freeman in the first round, followed by a really good second round match against Cyclope. Cologne did enter one other tournament this year, and that was Rise Underground's Outlaw Tournament over in the UK. Cologne made it to the finals of that tournament as well, where he lost to Big F and Joe. But hey, over the past several years, Cologne has gotten used to winning just about every tournament he's been a part of. So this year he made it to those finals, but didn't quite get that big win. On the flip side, though, Cologne took home a lot more gold than he's seen in quite some time. This year alone, Alex won his second unsanctioned pro hardcore title. He became the TNT Extreme Division Champion, as well as two additional GCW Ultraviolet Championship reigns. Plus, he won the GCW Tag Team titles as the Mega Bastards 
with John Wayne Murdoch. Uh, that's that's quite the year, if you ask me. Cologne did end his year running a tour over in Japan, but besides his GCW shows over there, I unfortunately did not see a lot of what happened. But what I did see happen was Alex Cologne just he continues to be the most reliable deathmatch wrestler in all of the United States. It's just my opinion, but I really don't ever see a boring match out of him. It's also my opinion, but I think he's mastered the art of deathmatch, technical and high flying all in one. And a lot of other people in the business just cannot come close to touching him. He put together another fantastic year, one that I hope he is extremely proud of. Before we get to that number one spot, though, let's take a quick look at four honorable mentions. Lucky 13. Lucky 13 was so close to making this list, starting the year off as H2O's Danny Havoc Hardcore Champion. He would go on to successfully defend the belt against opponents like Akira, Jimmy Lloyd, Bam Sullivan, Neil Diamond Cutter, Cole Radrick, Brandon Kirk, Alex Cologne, along with a couple others. While his title run was really impressive, he didn't win a single match after he lost the title to Brandon Kirk in September, so that really hurt him in the rankings. In fact, the only major success Lucky 13 had this year revolved around H2O. He lost in almost every other company he took part in, so that's why he didn't quite make the cut. Another honorable mention, Big Effin' Joe. You gotta give all the credit in the world to a man who goes out and wrestles deathmatch after deathmatch in his whitey tighties. Big Effin' Joe almost checked every single box to make the top 15 in this list. He won a majority of his matches this year. His matches were pretty good. He competed in four different deathmatch tournaments, including winning the Outlaw Tournament for Rise Underground. But in the end, he lacked one key ingredient, and that was notable victories. I mean, I'm not saying he beat all jobbers. He did have a few big wins. We're talking about Hoodfoot, John Wayne Murdoch, Jimmy Lloyd, and Necro Butcher. Twice for Necro Butcher, by the way. And speaking of those tournaments, besides winning the Outlaw Tournament, he saw early exits in XPW's King of the Death match, GCW's Nick Gage Invitational, and CZW's Tournament of Death. Better performance in maybe just one of those tournaments could have got him into the top 15 this year, but it just wasn't in the cards. Another honorable mention, Nick Gage. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Wait a minute, how can you have a top 15 deathmatch wrestler list if the most popular deathmatch wrestler is not even in that list? Well, I'm about to tell you, okay? Yes, we all know that Nick Gage is, of course, the most popular deathmatch wrestler going today. That's a no-brainer. You cannot take that away from him. But having said that, his 2022 consisted of only 10 matches. Yes, he only lost one of those matches, and also, yes, only one of those matches did not involve a title being on the line. And yeah, I guess Gage's career versus the GCW title match with John Moxley was one of the most talked about death matches of the year, but let's be honest, it wasn't quite a great performance. I do regret to say a lot of Gage's matches this year didn't hold up, and it appears he just might be running out of gas, guys. And I do not want that to sound like any kind of slight either. Each time Nick Gage steps in front of a crowd, you see and hear he is still the man by far. But 2022 just wasn't his best entering year to date. And despite ending it as the GCW world champion, he just didn't make the list. And your last honorable mention, Brandon Kirk. Brandon Kirk ended his 2022 with a bang, defeating his wife for the ICW American Deathmatch Championship. And take note that Brandon is also ending the year H2O's Danny Havoc Hardcore Champion. Without a doubt, that is a great feat, ending the year strong, holding two hardcore titles like that. But the only thing really holding Brandon back was the amount of losses he took this year. We're talking about only winning a little over 37% of his matches in 2022. All of his success came a little too late in the year to make the list, but he has a ton of momentum here at the end of the year. He is going to be riding that into 2023, and I have no doubt he could easily crack the top 10 of this list next year. So, hey, I'm saying he looks prime for a monster year. And number one, John Wayne Murdoch. The best deathmatch wrestler of 2022, I believe, was John Wayne Murdoch. The reason I said ranking number one and two were so difficult this year was because Murdoch and Cologne were so closely tied together the entire year. As I'm about to mention, they both won a bunch of titles. They had lights out death matches, some with each other. But to me, the final nudge that gave Murdoch that top spot 
was the Nick Gage Invitational Tournament win. In that tournament, the opening round saw Murdoch beat Mr. Whitey Tidies himself, Big F and Joe. In the second round, Cole Raddick put up a stellar fight, but Murdoch put him out as well. Then in the finals, we saw John Wayne Murdoch beat the man that I have ranked number two, Alex Colon. These two guys fought each other a total of five times this year. They traded the GCW Ultraviolet Championship back and forth. Cologne ended up winning the big blow off of their feud at Cage of Death Survival. Then the two formed the Mega Bastards, where they would go win the tag team titles together in GCW. And then their final meeting, like I just talked about, Murdoch won the Nick Gage Invitational. So to me, these two put together a full year long story going back and forth that was only matched by the Kirk storyline in this year. As great as Murdoch was in GCW this year, he was equally as solid in ICW No Holds Barred. After doing a fantastic job putting the ICW American Deathmatch Championship on the map, he finally dropped that title to Reed Bentley early in the year. I do want to mention that he also competed in the Battle of the Tough Guys 2 tournament where he was upset in the second round by Akira. It's hard to believe that Murdoch gets the top spot after not even having any winning record on the year, but it really has to do with the amount of top tier performances and quality of wins that put him so high up. I mean, when you compete at such a high level so many times a year against the best in the scene, you're going to trade some of those losses. His loss to Masashi Takeda at GCW's Planet Death would be a great example, I think. He did lose that match, but it was one of the better deathmatch performances all year long. Oh, and who else can say they took Wife Beater's finisher this year? Uh, yeah, that's an automatic number one ranking in my eyes. So congrats to the Duke of Hardcore, John Wayne Pussy, as the... And I would like to remind everybody that his name is not John Wayne Pussy. There is no confusion whatsoever. His name is John Wayne Pussy? No, no, it is not. He clarified it is not. It is not his name. It is Murdoch. Oh, yeah, uh, that's what I meant. Uh, Congrats to John Wayne Murdoch for taking the top spot in Jobber Radio's 2022 Deathmatch Wrestler of the Year rankings. And there you have it, folks, my top 15 Deathmatch Wrestlers of 2022. I want to hear who you have ranked as your best this year. Going into this list, I didn't realize how hard it was going to be to rank everybody, but oh my God, was it difficult. And I know there are a ton of wrestlers who didn't quite make the video, and I hope to talk about them more in the future. Seriously, I would love to add people like Cruel, Akira, Kennedy Copeland, Orn Veidt, Neil Diamond Cutter, uh, Atticus Coger, Dale Patricks, Mance Warner, Cole Raderick, and many, many more. But I had to make the tough decisions, and I had to see who made it and who didn't. I want to thank all the companies and promoters out there who held so many of these amazing events. And most of all, I want to thank the wrestlers who, dear Lord, you go out there and beat the ever loving hell out of yourself for our entertainment. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. And for all of you who have watched all the way to the end and are hearing me right now, thank you as well. Thank you so much. I hope to do this again next year. In the meantime, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Support independent wrestling. Go subscribe now. IWTV. Order the shows on Fight TV. Don't be a dick. Don't be a pirate. Pay the people who work hard to do what we all love. Thank you, everyone.